Did that scare you? Maybe that didn't quite scare you. Let's say spiders, or clowns, or crowded spaces. Maybe just in general, bugs. Maybe none of what I just listed scares you. Let's recall an earlier time, say middle school or high school. You're at home and you hear the garage door slowly opening. That's when it hits you. You forgot to wash the dishes. Scary. Or imagine this. Alternatively, it's at night. You're at home alone and you're watching a horror film. Good choice, by the way. Then you hear a rustling in the corner of your room. There's a lot of things to be afraid of. But what perplexes me the most is the fear of the dark. I'm gonna ask the audience, can I get a raise of hands? Who's been afraid of the dark before? Who's still afraid of the dark? Oh, so we have some brave souls willing to admit that. Frankly speaking, and objectively speaking, the dark is simply just a blanket of darkness, the absence of light. Nothing about it is inherently scary. So why are we so scared? In fact, it is what lies inside of it, the fear of the unknown. There's not much to gather from looking into the dark. You can't see, touch, or really quite feel anything just by looking at it. So, who knows what creepy, crawly, scary monsters might hide underneath your bed, or what shadows may be looming in the room. Or maybe, just maybe, some bugs that are willing to swarm you at any chance they're given. That is the fear of the unknown. Now, it's not only limited to the darkness. If anything, we come across the fear of the unknown every time in our lives. Every day we wake up not quite knowing what's going to happen next. And so, how would you combat that? In the account of darkness, when I was a kid, I used to have a night light. So, I'd plug it in, and every night, I, I would run up really quickly up my stairs, afraid something might catch me. But I would rest assured knowing that there was a nightlight there that would carve the light in the dark, showing what was once ambiguous. So there are ways to combat the unknown, one of which is education, the other being acceptance. When I was in elementary school, I sat alone at lunch, not by my own volition, of course, but due to my inability to make new friends and to properly introduce who I was. I was so scared of other people, I'd rather sit alone and sacrifice my own happiness watching other people have their own fun. And when you're a kid, everything is relatively new to you. That's good and bad. But to me, it made the world that much more scarier. And so this fear of the unknown propelled me to sit in silence and observe other people as they go by. So there I was, alone at lunch, hearing the murmur of others and groups giggling to each other, not quite, know, not quite knowing if they were directed towards me. In an attempt to make friends, I'd actually pretend to like interests, a variety of things, say, watching Western TV shows, applying makeup, and what's not. I had no clue what I was saying, but I figured if I didn't know or predict how people would respond, I'd at least make it favorable, right? That's until I realized I was more miserable than ever. In the sixth grade, I had attended this sixth grade social. I'd follow around my acquaintance who was everything I wasn't. He was tall, cool, smart, funny, and most importantly, socially acceptable. So there I was, watching him walk around, and everybody, hordes of people, would come across and say hi to him. 
No one dared to look my way or talk to me. I lived in the shadow of my acquaintance. This went on for about the entirety of the event until I realized I was at the mercy of my acquaintance. Anything I wanted to do or say or perform was not at my will. I was living in somebody else's shadow. And so I decided to face the unknown, to face my fears and take a leap of faith and finally talk to people I had never spoken to before. And by facing that fear, I had made the best choice. Now, I gradually soon to realize that I could make friends. To this day, my friends are a little bit of an enigma. I don't quite know what they're going to say next. They have uncalculable responses, unpredictable remarks, but I've learned to realize that the unknown is inevitable. That even though I don't know what's going to happen or what they're going to say, I'm going to accept that. So, facing the unknown is integral. Even though you don't quite know what's going to happen, you can just face it. In actuality, I do want to tell my younger self that she finally made friends. That the unknown and judgment is inevitable. That people will come and go in your life by their own preferences. If they like you, they will stay. If they don't, they will go. Thereby, by being yourself and truly yourself, you're able to effectively narrow your demographic, surround yourself by people who actually truly value your interests for who you really are. And so, facing your fears and accepting those unknowns are effective in finding who you really are. Now, there's other ways to go about facing the unknown. Say, for example, I mentioned education. Education is like a nightlight in the dark for the simple reason that, like a nightlight that shines in the dark, education, when equipped, can mitigate and reduce those unknowns. So, by reducing those unknowns and educating yourself and knowing you essentially minimize what you don't know and face those unknowns much more bearably. You don't just walk into an exam without studying, right? Or you don't enter a battle without armor. Now, I know some of us may be guilty of the former, but let's say after studying or equipping yourself with hypothetical armor, that you feel much more confident, that you're able to face those unknowns more so than you would have ever before. Education, like they say, or knowledge is power. And they mean it for a reason. Because those unknowns become a lot less scarier and you're way more prepared to face them. Now, in my everyday life, I find that the studies, philosophy and psychology, help me rationalize and make sense of these unknowns of my daily life. The study of fundamentals, governing systems, And the study of the brain really rationalized what this world is. I would like to say, though, that mathematics is quite interesting, too. Also, mathematics in itself actually is a man-made subject used to rationalize and understand the physical terrain. Paired with science, you can make sense of natural phenomena. Have you ever wondered why You would hear philosopher names in math textbooks. Recall Pythagoras of the Pythagorean theorem, known for his triangle. That's because both math and philosophy aim to make sense of the world, albeit by different ways. All in all, learning is very essential to face those fears and to combat those unknowns. Learning about anything, education is a luxury. When you go about life, you'll realize that when you know something, you have a leg up or an advantage on those who don't. And luckily for us, knowledge is at our fingertips. You can learn just about anything, and it'll help you in this world. I will say that, in in essence, 
that humans are frightened creatures. Eons and eons of human evolution have developed our amygdalas, the fear center in our brain, to prevent harmful situations, prevent ourselves from entering things that might hinder our successes and chances of survival. However, in this modern day, you'll realize that sometimes fears are irrational and actually deter us from opportunities. So, the next time you come across the unknown or find yourself in a dark room, I'd like to ask you, would you grab a nightlight or would you walk into the darkness and into the unknown? My name is Ashley. Thank you so much.